everyone. It's time for another video about one of my favorite trips ever. And we have worked our way up to uh, pretty recently. Today's video is going to be about my trip to Disney World in Florida in uh, late February, early March of 2015. So this trip uh, was my son's senior year of high school. So my son was, was 18. 18? I think he was 18. My daughter was 10 and Megan was 10 and Ben was six and he turned seven while we were there. He actually turned seven the day we came home. We had to fly home on his birthday, which was kind of a bummer. But it was cool that Ben's birthday was right at that time because we fully took advantage of it. We told, we got him a birthday button and we told everybody that it was his birthday and he got showered with goodness. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, this was going to be our last family vacation before Andrew, you know, left home and went to college. Uh, we had planned on doing a Disney cruise and had one booked and I think all paid for. And then they announced the music trip, the high school music trip for that year, which was to go to Dallas and the dates overlapped. And so it made it impossible for us to do the Disney cruise because the ship would have left by the time Andrew came home from Dallas. I was actually secretly hoping when they announced it that Andrew would say, I don't want to go to Dallas. I'd rather go with you guys. But he did want to go to Dallas. He wanted to do that last music trip with his friends in high school, which I can totally understand. And in hindsight, I'm glad he got to do that because that would have been a bummer if he hadn't gotten to take that last trip. And it turned out to be a pretty cool trip. I have talked before about how he almost didn't make it back. There was a freak ice storm in Dallas when they were supposed to leave to come home on the buses and the highways were all closed and they literally were not allowed to leave. So they had to stay in the hotel that they were in. You know, this is like 400 high school students um, and all their chaperones and teachers and everything. Andrew called me. I was sitting right here <laughs> um, in my rocking chair and Andrew called me on the morning like he should have already been like halfway home and said, um, mom, we haven't left and we don't know when we're going to leave. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they got stuck there for, I don't know, an extra 24, 36 hours or something until they, they cleared the roads and they could leave. And this threw me into a frenzy. I had to come up with like plan A, B, C, D, E on what was going to happen if he didn't make it back in time for our flight to go to Disney World because it was our spring break which our spring break used to be more of a winter break and it used to be in February and I liked that and didn't and don't like it um I liked it better because for the purposes of going on vacation on a family vacation crowd wise and cost wise it was better like to go to Disney, to go on a cruise, to go anywhere, it was less expensive and less busy. And so for that reason, I liked it. However, they've now shifted our spring break to the middle of March. And now from a teaching perspective, I see the value of that because it puts our break halfway between coming back from Christmas break and summer vacation. And so it puts it right in the middle, so it makes it more even. Otherwise, those last few months of the year really dragged out for teachers and students because you'd go a long time then, all of March, all of April, all of May, with no break at all. So that's why they did that. And they've kind of stuck now with the same week in March for like the past, for the past three years. And coming up this next year, it's the same too. So anyway, um... But that year it was in, it started in February and I think we did miss a couple of days of school though because, so those first uh, four or five days of our, of our break, Megan and Ben and I just sat at home doing nothing, waiting for Andrew to come back from Dallas. They had purposely taken the music trip at that time so the kids wouldn't miss school, all the music kids. I think they did miss like the Friday and maybe the Thursday before the break. And then it was like Sunday, Monday, and I think they were supposed to come back on Tuesday. I'm pretty sure they were going to come back on Tuesday and we were leaving for Disney World on Wednesday and we were going to come back the following Thursday. So we were going to miss 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of that second week of school. I think that's what it was, something like that. So we were going like midweek to midweek on our Disney World trip. And um, it was, I think it was nine days total travel time. Um, and because they got delayed because of the ice storm, uh, I was trying to figure out first, could I fly him from Dallas directly to Orlando and meet him there? Could he get a train? Um, <laughs> could, and then we had it, we were actually, it, it almost came to this. They were going to be coming up on 35, Highway Interstate 35, through the Twin Cities, go right past the airport. His orchestra teacher actually had agreed that if they had to, they would stop the bus at the airport and let him off. And we would just grab him and then go. And so um, we were prepared to do that. We also had preparations that my mom would grab him from where somewhere along the route and then meet us at the airport. I mean, we were really in a scramble. They did get all the way back to home in Wisconsin. But literally, like, he got home and we had to, like, put the stuff in the car and leave. It was that quick. Um, and so, you know, and he's texting me and calling me the whole time telling me where they are. Um, because he wasn't here to help me, because this was only the second big trip that I had taken with all three kids by myself, you know, that involved air travel and everything. The first one was the last video I made, which was Disneyland in 2012. And... This time, because he wasn't here and I had expected him to be here, I didn't have him here to help me pack. So I was actually like laying out his clothes and taking pictures of stuff and sending them to him like, which shirt do you want? And da, da, da. You know, and so here I was trying, my kids were still, the other two were still pretty little and I was still kind of packing for them. And, um... You know, I talked in one of my other videos about how they're such good packers now, but at this time I was still having to do a lot of it. And I just had too much stuff to remember. I, re I know that I did fine for the kids. It was me. When we got to Disney World, I realized I had forgotten all my socks. <laughs> and I had forgotten, you know, other than the ones I was wearing. And I had forgotten deodorant and I had forgotten a razor. And so um, we never did get to go swimming or go in the pool while we were there. Number one, because it was a time thing. And number two, we had planned to do that on our rest day. And on our rest day in the middle of the trip where we were just going to do the resorts, um, we slept until noon. <laughs> we were so tired from getting up for rope drop the first however many days that we all slept until it was past 12. We missed our reservation for T-Rex in Disney Springs, had to call and change the reservation. Um, but we were going to go swimming that day, and then we ended up not having time because we also had a reservation that night at BOMA at Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is a tip to you. Don't ever book two table service restaurants in the same day. That's too much. It's too much time, and it's too much food. And those two ended up being really close together because we had to change the T-Rex reservation to like 1 o'clock or 1.30 or something to get there because we took the boat. We were staying at um, Port Orleans Riverside. We took the boat to Disney Springs. And then we still had to wait forever. Um, I think I talked about that in one of my Disney dining videos. Um, and uh, and then our BOMA reservation was, you know, for dinner time. And so there was only like three or four hours in between these two huge meals. So that was kind of dumb. But anyway... We did make it there. Uh, we flew Minneapolis to Orlando, had no problems. Um, we took Disney's Magical Express. We stayed at Port Orleans Riverside. I was a little disappointed when we were still in Minneapolis waiting at our gate to get on the plane. Disney texted me and said, your room is ready. And when they told me what room it was, I had requested a room at Port Orleans Riverside in the mansion side. Because I just liked the look of it better and stuff. And I still feel that way, like as far as the atmosphere. We never even got to walk over and look at the mansion side with all the pretty fountains and gardens and stuff. We just never had time. So that's something I would advise you. You really got to build in time for your resort. We just didn't have enough time. This was the longest trip to Disney World I ever took. And I still didn't get to do everything I wanted to do. So 
I don't know how anybody makes Disney World a once in a lifetime thing unless they go for like three weeks because there's just so much. It's so big and there's so much to do. I mean, I've been there six times and I still have lots more I want to do or do again um, in places I want to see. So anyway, um, they put us in the alligator bayou section. And at first I was disappointed when we were like getting on the plane and stuff. I'm like, oh, dang it. And when we got there, I even asked, are you sure you don't have anything on the mansion side? And they said, no, sorry. But the alligator bayou section at Disney World has the little fold down Murphy bed for the extra kid. So that turned out great because Andrew's very tall and really needs a bed to himself. So Andrew had one of the queen beds. Megan and I shared the other queen bed and Ben got the little fold down bed. So it was great. They don't have that on the mansion side. They have those at Caribbean Beach and Port Orleans, Riverside, and I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think they have, well, and then they've got the day bed, which is an actual full-size person bed in many of the deluxe resorts for a fifth person. So, but as far as like the moderates or the values, those are the only two where you're going to get an extra bed like that. So... And then the other thing I liked about our room, I didn't, the alligator bayou section, it's very well themed, but it's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's a swamp. Like there's these trees with water around them and you're walking on the path. And at night, especially when we were walking back to our room and stuff, I would hear like noises in the bushes. And I always felt like, it's like a jaguar going to come out and eat me or something. It was kind of scary, but pretty too. It was weird. Um, it's very, very well-themed. I'm a little disappointed. There's been some articles about this. Disney is getting away from that extreme theming now. Well, they are and they're not. The new hotels they're building, like the DVC res resorts, like uh, Grand Torino at Coronado Springs, uh, the new DVC resort, Riviera Resort near Caribbean Beach that they built, the new one that they just announced to go on the um, former, um, you know, over by wilderness, uh, reflections is what it's called. Um, those, uh, are getting more generic, like any hotel anywhere. They're fancy, but not themed. But at the same time, Disney World has also got in the works like the new Star Wars Resort which is extremely themed, like you're there in space. And we anticipate, you know, writers and travel writers and stuff and bloggers have been anticipating that they're going to do more of that. However, you know, like Super Princess or Total Marvel or something. But those are going to be, wow, expensive. And so the percentage of guests who are going to be able to afford to stay at those is going to be low. So anyway, that's kind of the... Thing I am foreseeing with Disney resorts. So anyway, we stayed at Port Orleans Riverside in the Alligator Bayou section. We did have a nice easy walk to the bus stop and we lucked out because where our bus stop was was the first bus stop in the route around Port Orleans, which also in lower times of the year picks up the people at Port Orleans French Quarter as well. So in the morning, we would always get a seat on the bus, which was really nice. Um, Coming back, we didn't necessarily get a seat. We often had to stand, but no big deal. Um, and on that trip, we did, um, weather was good. It was kind of cold. I know that Andrew a couple nights had shorts on and was cold and wished he had pants. Um, I think I bought a sweatshirt the very first night we were at Epcot, and I got really cold, and I bought an Epcot zipper hoodie that I still have. Um so it was kind of chilly. We, we had some, I mean, it was nice during the day, but at night when it got dark, it would get cold. So we were there like the very end of February and we came back, like I said, on Ben's birthday, March 5th was the day we flew home. So, and like I said, it was like nine days. So we went to Epcot twice and we divided it into like a future world day and a world showcase day, which is a good way to do it. However, we still didn't have enough time for World Showcase. We didn't get to the Germany, China, or Italy pavilions at all. Um, 
the kids went and did got their passport stamps really quick in those while I was holding a spot for us to watch illuminations. But I didn't get to go to those pavilions at all. We spent quite a bit of time in Canada, France, the UK pavilions. Um, Megan and Ben actually played the um, the interactive game that you can play in the, I can't think of what it's called. Um, now it's on your own phone. You used to check out a flip phone from like a cast member and that's what they did. Our, um, the Disney Photo Pass photographer got some really great pictures of them while they were doing that. And they did that in the UK pav pavilion. We went to Mexico because we ate in um, uh, San Angel Inn. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time in Norway. Frozen Ever After was not open yet at that time. We have not been to that yet. And Maelstrom was already closed. So we didn't get to do the ride in Norway. We went to Akershus on this trip in the Norway Pavilion. And, you know, we went to Morocco, the American Pavilion, um, Japan. I think we went to the Japan Pavilion. But anyway, and then we did, I think we did two days at Magic Kingdom. We did one day at Hollywood Studios and one day at Animal Kingdom. And those were both a little bit of a disappointment on this trip because Animal Kingdom that day, it poured down rain all day. And I, we ended up having to buy the ponchos. Um, my rain rain jacket, which I, th I literally threw it in a trash can. It really wasn't waterproof for how much rain there was that day. And I ended up just throwing it away because it was soaked. I'd had it for years and it was just soaked through. I have bought a better rain coat since then, but that day we ended up buying two ponchos, one for me and I think one for Ben. The rain jackets that Megan and Andrew had were fine. Um, so that was a little bit limiting. We couldn't do much outside at Animal Kingdom that day. But Megan sure as heck had a great time going on Expedition Everest. <laughs> she she loved that ride. She went on Expedition Everest once with Andrew and then I think four more times by herself. And she was 10. Um, we had some great character meet and greets though. And then the day we went to Hollywood Studios, we just didn't have enough time. Ben really wanted to go to the stunt show and we didn't make it to it and that's closed now. We missed our reservation at 50's Primetime Cafe, which I had been really looking forward to because the, we had signed the kids up for Jedi Training Academy, which was great. I loved Jedi Training Academy. It was hilarious and awesome. I think we had as much fun, Andrew and I, watching it as they did getting to do it. And we got some great pictures from that too. But because we did that, we didn't get to go to 50's Primetime Cafe. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But that was the first time I'd ever been to, Fa first and only time I'd ever been to Fantasmic, which was great. We got the Fantasmic dining package with, we'd had lunch at Mama Melrose's, which was wonderful on my dining favorites. And then because of that, we got priority seating at Fantasmic and it was excellent seating. It was really good. So we had an overall very fun day at Hollywood Studios. We just didn't have enough time to do everything. And, you know, like now the stunt show's closed, so we'll never get to see that. But um, lots has changed. At uh, That was the last time we got to ride the great movie ride because that has since closed and is getting turned into Mickey's Runaway Railroad. So I'm excited to go back and see the changes at Hollywood Studios. Um, but other than that, we had a really great time, except for that kind of the fact that I forgot stuff and ended up having to buy all those things in the gift shop and a little bit frazzled rust day that didn't turn out to be very restful, we had a really, really good time. I mean, we all just really enjoyed ourselves. Um, oh, I did lose Megan <laughs> at Magic Kingdom. I'll put the Lost Child video up here. Uh, but she did everything right, and she was perfectly fine. And you can learn some lessons from that about what not to do <laughs> if you lose your kid at Disney World. Um, it, was, it was a very good last family vacation before my oldest went to college. Um, it was a good time to go and we had a great time. Um, we still got to do another big family vacation. After that, two years later, we went on a Disney cruise and that is going to be the next video, which will be my last one in this series of my favorite trips. Hopefully I will have more favorite trips in the future that I can add to it. But um, yeah, that's where we're at now. So Thank you guys for joining me today and for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little notification bell so you get notifications of upcoming videos. And safe travels, everyone.